For over a century, people everywhere have been moved, inspired and awed by the magic of movies. From the days of silent cinema, it's been an art form based entirely on pushing the boundaries of technology to be able to tell a better story. So how has technology advanced movie making and movie going today, and what can we expect to happen next? Let's find out. Please welcome in conversation with the Hollywood Reporter's Carolyn Giadina, the Academy's Chief Operations Officer Christine Simmons, and Academy Award-winning software developer Mark Aylent, who brought a little gold friend. Welcome. When many people hear about the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, you think about their flagship event, the Oscars. But the Academy is actually working 12 months a year on numerous initiatives, many of which involve technical innovation. Uh, it's that combination of science in support of the art, to use the title of the session, enables members to create awe. In fact, Academy members are regularly developing advancements in areas including imaging technology, sound, rendering, computer graphics, and facial capture. So for starters, I'd like to let our speakers introduce themselves. And why don't we start with Mark and Oscar? <laughs> Hi. So uh, I'm an Academy Award-winning software developer. And you don't really often hear those words together. Um, I work here in Toronto at a small software company. Uh, we've been writing animation and visual effects software that's been used around the world. Um, and uh, they gave me this. <laughs> I think they did more than give it to you. I think you earned it very much so, Mark. Absolutely earned it. And Christine. Yes. Hi, Christine Simmons, Chief Operating Officer for the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. I get to oversee all the fun educational programs, site tech council, um, all the innovative things that we're doing both to preserve film history as well as advance it. So exciting to be here. Well, why don't we start, Christine, if you would tell us a bit about the Academy's um, initiatives in technology and its goals. We have so many things that we're doing, and we have brilliant members like Mark um, and members globally that come together to really tackle a lot of the technological problems and challenges and innovations that we see within motion pictures. Um, it's evolved so much in, in the last few years. It's so much so that we're having what we call a digital dilemma because so much of our film today is captured digitally um, and how do we preserve that and make sure that it's here for years to come, both culturally speaking, but also historically. So from tackling the digital dilemma and, and making sure that we're taking good care of all of those terabytes and petabytes of data that we have, um, in addition to making sure that the colors are preserved so well that it's as the filmmakers and the artists intended them to be. These are the types of things that we tackle the Academy. We're really excited to see it. In fact, we have a clip. Should we check it out? Let's take a look. Yeah. Those of you in the audience, take a look at the monitors next to the stage, and you'll see what over a billion viewers worldwide are marveling at right now. This is blowing Spielberg's Cage mind. Welcome, Gold 2018. How are you? We are so excited to announce this year's Oscar nominees. Period. Yeah! I would like to thank the Academy. Thank you so much to the Academy. And can oh. you believe it? We're still here. Really such an honor to be a part of this celebration. Everybody who comes to Los Angeles will want to see what's inside that museum across the street. The Film Archive has over 100,000 titles in our collection, over 200,000 items. We really actively encourage folks to do research of our collection. The Academy Library is a vital resource, not only for the members of the Academy, but also for those in the public interested in studying some aspect of film. We are live streaming to three other satellite Bake Off locations in San Francisco, London, and New Zealand. Welcome. ISIS is driven by the industry, trying to solve some very important problems that we're all facing. Today at SIGGRAPH, we're announcing the Academy Software Foundation. Our mission is to increase the quality and the quantity of our open source contributions that basically just makes it easier. Hi, 
reminded us. With film science. And for this, we salute you. <laughs> so, one of the things you saw in that clip was a bit, a bit about the Science and Technology Awards. And Mark, since you experienced that firsthand, would you tell us a bit about that process? So, so most everyone has probably seen the Academy Awards on TV. And, you know, about halfway through the show, they have this little blurb that comes on and they say, earlier we presented the Scientific and Technical Academy Awards. Well, that's what this one is. So <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's given to film scientists and film engineers um, and it's given a little earlier than the, the awards broadcast. And for us, in a for wonderful film engineers... Ceremony. Pardon in me? a wonderful ceremony. Yes, it's beautiful. Which is so really for, for film engineers and film scientists, this is a huge, huge accomplishment. It's, it's one of the few times that you know, a software developer can turn into a, a little mini celebrity. <laughs> um, the, 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 the amount of effort that the Academy does to, to research and, and give these awards is, is incredible. So, um, the, yeah. so why don't, for, as an example, tell us a little bit about the technology that you developed that delivered this Oscar. Sure. So uh, I've been writing software for close to 30 years, um, and it's been used for visual effects. So visual effects in the film industry is, is a really challenging process. So the visual effects artists are often asked to do something that the audience has never seen before, something that, the, the, that will blow their minds. And the first time they're asked that is, is really good, and they can do something. But 10 or 15 times after they're asked to create something new that the audience has never seen, it's, it becomes a little challenging. So when we wrote our software, we made a conscious effort um, to, to make sure that if there was a choice to be made, we would always choose the choice that uh, didn't close doors, that left flexibility open. So as we built our software, it became a tool that was really easy to repurpose and re-engineer to generate visual effects. And so uh, over the 30 years that I've been writing software, our software is now being used in over, over 700 films to generate visual effects. Anything from the invisible effects that you probably never even notice to the big explosions and, and crazy uh, water simulations that you see in yeah. And I think you brought a look at Houdini from side effects. Oh, sorry, you, yeah, the, the product's called Houdini. <laughs> <laughs> Company's called Side Effects. Elaborate on some of the SciTech community's additional initiatives. So the, the Academy, um, the awards show that you see is really just the tip of the iceberg of what the Academy does. And the scientific and technical, the, the Academy's really recognized the, the contributions of technology to for, for many years. The first SciTech awards, I think, were 1930. And so they've given awards for things like Dolby Sound, or, or certain types of film or types of lenses that give a certain look. And so uh, the, the Academy has kept a very close eye on what technology can do. And obviously, they're, they're also looking into the future. Right. And, um, and uh, some of the emerging technologies that you're looking at right now to create awe, again, to use our title, is um, machine learning. Um, what, do you, what do you envision for that technology? So, so the, the Academy is made up of a whole bunch of really smart people who are passionate about films and passionate about technology. And so they, are, they have their, pulse, their, their fingers on the pulse of what's going on out there. So if you were here a couple of talks ago, you might have seen Darren talking about how machine learning is used for, for facial capture. But um, 
it's also uh, not only just facial capture, but uh, in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, they were able to use machine learning networks for, for the ink lines on the characters' faces. So even in animated features, um, they were able to take those deep learning networks and pull them into our software and, and free the artist up so that they could be more creative. Every frame in that movie was handcrafted with a lot of love. And so it gave the artist a lot more time to be put, use their creative juices. Well, we're, we're going to talk about a few of the initiatives um, from the SciTech community at the Academy. Let's start with, which was also covered in the video, uh, the Software Foundation. Yeah, the Software Foundation is absolutely amazing. Um, it's a, a community where we come together and look at open source and open code. And we have everybody from the studios to technologists coming together all for one purpose. And that's to, again, create awe, uh, both with filmmakers and technologists. And so it's open to everyone. So if you all are want to join the fun of, of being part of the technology that uh, is the future uh, at the so Academy. That's actually really one thing that the Academy does well. So yeah. they look at the, the industry and they look to see possible problems. And one, one thing they noticed is that there's a lot of open source software out there that's used by the film industry. Yep. And so they said, well, some of it is not up to par. Some of it doesn't meet the standards that right. is required by studios. So they formed the Academy Software Foundation. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a fantastic. We have several projects. You can go to AS, aswf.io, and there you can see all the different projects we're working on. And again, anything from color and coding uh, to actually we're starting to look at the sound in a theater and the experience that you have there as well to make sure that we're capturing that which the filmmaker intended. So it's a lot of really cool projects and a lot of really smart people at the table. And the Academy is really excited to be a catalyst for that conversation. Um, another area, and uh, an area that the Academy has done several reports on already, is what they call the digital dilemma. Would you yeah. explain that and its purpose? Yeah, I alluded to it earlier, but you know, again, as we have all of this data that we're capturing um, in in the arts now, we have to figure out how we preserve that. So historically, part of my purview is, and you saw the film vaults in the video, we have cans and cans of photochemical and celluloid film that we preserve and in these vaults that are freezing with low humidity and um, making sure that the film is preserved. But how do we preserve digital film? And how do we make sure that 20 years from now, 100 years from now, it will be viewed as the artist intended? Um, and so this is the dilemma that the industry and the academy are tackling directly. Um, not only how to preserve it, how to save it, um, and how do we make it accessible as well for everyone. Um, so, so we're working on it. Um, it's an industry-wide initiative, but we are definitely proud to be the catalysts of it. We um, have a publication we wrote, we wrote and authored at Oscars.org, and it's called The Digital Dilemma. We continue this research today with our SciTech Council and all the members of our academy community. So we enjoy, we, we encourage you guys to help us solve this dilemma because we haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> and, and it's so far reaching, well beyond even the Film Academy, the National Archives, and anyone who is involved in archiving is struggling with these questions right it now. It is. We're, I mean, we're, we're even partnered with the Library of Congress. So this is something that is a global um, initiative that we know we need to solve sooner than later. Okay. Um, on the subject of preserving, um, you're also working on the Academy Museum, which I believe is nearing completion. Would you tell us a little bit about that? We are so excited. It was that beautiful building for those uh, who may be from LA. It's, um, it's this huge globe that is just coming to beautiful fruition. We're super excited about it. It'll take you through the history of film, but also to where film is going. Um, and so it, it's one of our proudest achievements. There's nothing like it. Um, and it's really going to be something that Academy members and the fans alike can really come and understand the art and the science of filmmaking. So soon to be open. We're very excited. Well, um, let's wrap up with some of your initiatives going forward. And I think the Gold Plat program is something that we should touch on too. Yes, the Gold Program is one of our most proud and achieving programs that we have. It looks at emerging filmmakers um, and diverse filmmakers from across the country. There are several tracks, but the one that we're super excited about now is our visual effects track that we're going to be launching soon out of London so we can get all the new and emerging and diverse filmmakers understanding what this technology is and to be able to um, be paired up with brilliant Academy members as mentors as well. So the Gold Program is phenomenal. So for those future filmmakers out there, you definitely definitely want to check that out. 
And for those interested in getting involved in the Software Foundation, what do they need to do? Yes. So if you're a software developer, you can go to aswf.io. You can sign up. Um, there, it's very easy to sign up. It's very easy to contribute. Um, there are weekly meetings on several projects. Um, the, the Software Foundation is trying to pull in six projects a year, I think. Um, and so it's a very ambitious effort. Uh, and we could use all that, the open source hands that would be helpful. You, you too could win an Oscar, yes? <laughs> it's possible, <laughs> yes. I never thought I would. <laughs> OK, thank you for joining us. And please join me in thanking our speakers.